So you bought a piece of furniture, you have your paint, you have your brushes, but how do you prep the piece to start painting? You have friends that say, oh, just slap some paint on, you're good. You have some friends that say, oh, there's 22 steps. So what are the right steps? That's what we're gonna work through today on Wise Out Paint Party. We're gonna walk through all the steps for proper prep to paint a piece and our recommendations that we have for you for the best longevity of your finishes. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned. Welcome to the party. Today we're going to be working on our recommendations for best practice on prepping a piece to paint. And for that, you're going to need the right supplies and the right equipment. Equipment, the main thing for that is safety equipment. First and foremost, we want to hit on that. You need goggles and gloves. Anytime you're using anything that could splash, get you in the eyes, you want to use your goggles. And anytime you're going to use a chemical or something, even if it's environmentally safe, like a green EZ, you definitely want to use gloves because it still could cause irritation on your skin. So we have those readily available. Next, you're going to need a blue shop towel. You're going to need water bottles. And I have here, I have a water bottle that's going to be water and our cleaning agent 50-50. I have a water bottle that's just water. And I have another water bottle that's going to be our denatured alcohol and water 50-50. So you're going to need three water bottles for those three particular supplies that you have. And then you're gonna need, what I recommend anyway, is a 220 sanding block. And it just makes it easier having, or sanding sponge, however you wanna call it, just makes it easier to use. Uh, microfiber lint-free cloth. And then your denatured alcohol, obviously you're gonna mix with your water for your denatured alcohol and water mix 50-50, which we'll go over when we get to that step. And then last but not least, our wise all primer and my recommendation for brushes anytime I do priming is going to be the Klingon F50. So that's what you're going to need. All right so our first step is to degrease. So if you're brand new to furniture, furniture painting you just have to think about if you're using anything that's going to be water-based like our paints and you're going to be applying it over top of something that has oils or grease or any of that kind of stuff on it, you're going to need to get rid of that because the water and water and oil just don't mix. So you're going to try to paint over top of, you know, where people have touched and have left their the oils and stuff behind, and it's not going to have that proper adhesion. Although our CSP, our chalk synthesis paint, will stick to most surfaces, this step, is the key step to ensuring that that actually happens. So with that being said, we now have a perfect Green EZ cleaning agent that you can use that's environmentally friendly, goes along with a lot of the other environmentally friendly products that we offer at Wiseall. And we use that for our cleaning step. So how do you do that? So what I've done is I've taken this, I've diluted it 50-50 in this water bottle with water. Now you do not have to delete it, dilute it, or you can dilute it even more. It just depends on, you know, you'll have to play with it a little bit and see what you're trying to do. Ultimately, this stuff is strong stuff. It'll work really well. It actually probably could take off finishes undiluted. So you just have to decide how much dilution you want, how much you're gonna put on, and decide from there. I usually go about 50-50 what I'm cleaning with this because I'm not going to be spraying it and leaving it on. We're have to worry about it eating through you know, any layers of, I just want to clean the top part because I'm going to be painting it. So the first steps, obviously, I'm going to put my iPro on and some gloves because you definitely want to be safe. Um, it is environmentally friendly stuff, but it is strong stuff. So you might have some skin irritation. If you get it on your hands too much, you definitely use some gloves, use some iPro. You don't want to splash anything in your eyes, whether it's safe or not. So we're going to take, I got my spray bottle out and we're just going to simply spray this. See if I can get a good mist here. There we go. So we're just going to mist it over the top. And this is going to be our first step. So I just pulled this board out from the corner. Some of the ones I've saved from old pieces to do uh, videos with. It's got dust and dirt and probably some spider webs all over it. 
And we're just gonna tape and clean this piece with it. I just have a shop towel and you can already see it's getting dirty because that green EZ is pulling off probably some of the grease and grime that was on it, some of the dirt that's been sitting on it from all the travels it's had. And this is all we're gonna do for our first step. We're just gonna wipe this thing down, get it good and clean, try to get as much of the spots like down in the cracks. Ooh, wow, yeah, that's really dirty. Look at that thing. So here's another little tip. If it gets that dirty, you're gonna wanna flip this thing over and flip it around. You're not gonna wanna keep wiping the dirt back into it. So, and if I see it that dirty like that, I'll probably give it a nice another little spritz. Just go back over it and make sure I get it good and clean. So I'm just using a shop towel for this because ultimately all we're trying to do is just get the top layer of grease and grime off of this and get it good and clean. All right, you can see it's still pulling some off. So you just wanna kind of, what I do with my shop towels is I just fold them in force. So I have four different sides that I can utilize to continue cleaning as I need to. And that's gonna be all there is to it. So we're gonna wipe, wipe it down with your cleaning agent, just like I did. And then we're gonna let it dry. All right, so we've given it some time to dry. Our next step is gonna to be to rinse. So another key step, again, all these steps are important, but this is another key step that sometimes people will skip because they don't think it's important because maybe you don't see anything right now. Um, you're just thinking, oh, I'll go on to the next step. Rinse, rinse is the next step. So what you might not see, or you might see, depending on you know what happens with the particular wood or finish that you're working with, you might see some stuff come to the surface or you might not. But what we wanna do is we wanna rinse off any remnants of anything that the cleaning agent has brought to the surface and any of the lingering uh, cleaning agent that's left behind. So we got our water bottle, just straight water this time. And we're just gonna lightly mist over the top. If I can get this thing to mist properly here. There we go. All right, so we're just gonna wipe this thing down Again, with another shop towel, and you can see the difference already. The shop towel is not turning brown or orange or dirty or because we're just simply rinsing off what we had already done before. So if I'm wiping this down like this and it's not turning brown or orange or dirty, then we know we did the cleaning step correctly. And all we're doing right now is just cleaning up any remnants of the cleaning agent that was left behind. So we're just rinsing that off. That's what this step is gonna be. Now you probably wonder well, why would I need to do that? Um, ultimately at the end of the day, if the cleaning agent doesn't evaporate and disappear, if it's just sitting on the surface, it could have uh, caused issues with your adherence of the paint. So you wanna make sure you rinse it all the way off. The cleaning agent was specifically to get the grease and grime and dirt off of the piece. So you're starting with a fresh, clean piece, but it's not fresh and clean. If we like had a spot where I was really heavy with the cleaning agent wiping, and then I just left it, and now I still have a little bit of cleaning agent on there. We wanna rinse that off. So we're not having any issues with adherence. So that's all we're gonna do. So we're gonna just do this. And the biggest thing is if your shop towel is clean like this one is, that means you did the cleaning step correctly, and you're gonna be really good to go to move on to the next steps. So I'm just gonna wipe this thing down, rinse it off. And then again, we're gonna to have to let it dry. As we go through these steps, letting it dry is as important as the step itself, because we don't wanna move on to doing anything else while it's still wet. All right, so there we go. That's our next step, rinse. All right, so we've let this thing dry completely, uh, which is very important. Anytime you do anything with it wet, whether it's the cleaning agent or the water, you want to let it dry before you move on to anything else. So our next step is going to be scuff. So what I have is a 220 sanding block. Now you could use 320. Um, I wouldn't go any lower than 220 when you're just scuffing. So again, if you're new to furniture painting, um, you're like, well, I heard you can just clean it and paint. Yes, you can do that. 
Again, this is going to be best practices for prepping a piece to paint. And for us, what we like to do is scuff before we do anything else after we've done the cleaning. And scuffing, basically what that's going to do is just give it the surface a little bit of teeth, something for the next steps to grip onto, especially if you have something that's super high gloss, um, a laminate or something like that is super hot. I mean, very highly recommended to do some scuffing, but I scuff everything that I do. These steps are the steps that I take for every piece that I paint. And again, are our recommendations for a best practice. So 220 sanding block, and you're just gonna scuff across the top. And I know this probably sounds horrible on camera, but I'm just gonna show you what I do. I'm not pushing super hard. I'm just running it across the top. And if I was to look, you could see where it's just scuffing the surface. I'm not trying to scratch down through the finish to the wood. I'm not trying to distress this thing. I'm just going over the top to scuff the surface up a little bit, just to give it a little bit, like I said, a little teeth, something for the, the next steps to adhere to. And it just enhances that uh, longevity of your finish. All these steps, that's what it's for. We're trying to, you know, make your painting experience amazing by giving you the best surface to start from and giving you the, the most longevity out of your finishes that you're gonna have. So, so again, we're just scuffing this thing up and it can be just as easy. Just taking it and gently going over the top, around the sides, all that kind of stuff and scuffing it up real good. And that's it. That's all you're gonna to need to do. So just go over all the edges, make you kind of lean down a little, you know if you scuffed it because you'll have a little bit of that, you know, sanding dust that comes up. So what you'll need for that is obviously you'll need to get all that up. So you get you a lint-free microfiber cloth and you just wipe that back. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is you want to ensure that you do not use a tack cloth for this step. You definitely want to use a microfiber cloth. See how it's pulling that up. And the reason why you don't want to use a tack cloth is because those are embedded with beeswax and that is wax and we would be putting wax on it. We'd be negating all the work we just did because we leave some lingering beeswax behind and obviously water, oil, wax don't mix. So you wanna make sure you use a lint-free microfiber cloth like I have here and just wipe back the surface. And that's all we're doing, we're just getting the dust up. Now, if you, you wanna vacuum it, you could do that as well. If you have uh, a compressor in your shop and you have a blower where you could blow it off, that's good too. Ultimately, you just want to wipe over it a few times and ensure you're not getting anything else up. And once you get to that point, you are ready to move on to the next step. So that's it. So start with your 220. I use a sanding sponge just because it's flexible, allows you to mush it down into spots without having like sanding paper that's weird to hold. And then a microfiber lint-free cloth to wipe it all back. All right, so our next step is gonna be denatured alcohol in water, 50-50. And of course, I got my eye pro back on, I got my gloves back on. And what this last step of the cleaning part of it is going to be just to get any last lingering grease or anything that we might have missed. And the great part about the water and denatured alcohol is the water will dry and the denatured alcohol will evaporate. So what we're gonna do, just gonna spray some on, and we're gonna wipe this thing down one last time. So we're just gonna go over the top of everything we already did. And ultimately what should look like is you should have a nice clean blue shop towel. You should not have any more brown, no more dirt, no more orange, no more anything coming up after all the work you've already done. And that's what's gonna really show you, hey, I have an amazing surface and give you the confidence to go on to what's gonna be next. Next is going to be priming. And again, this video is gonna be our recommendations for best practices for prepping a piece of paint, which will include priming.
So we're doing everything we can to get this surface ready to go. And this is our last cleaning step. So now if I flip this over, it's not brown, it's not dirty, it's nice and clean. And again, I'm using a shop towel. I want to reiterate the fact you do not want to use a tack cloth for any of these steps because it is embedded with beeswax and may cause problems with adhesion later because you're leaving remnants of the beeswax behind, which is going to cause issues with um, the paint sticking because oil and water, I mean, beeswax is a part of what waxes are made to top coat it. So you want to make sure you don't have any of that lingering behind. So use a microfiber cloth if you're using a cloth with this step or just simply grab a new shop towel like I'm doing here. Because all we're really doing is just wiping over the surface and ensuring any little last bits. But we did a great job. And if you did, it should be blue just like this. And that'll be it for this step. All right, so we're on to our final step, which is going to be priming. Uh, again, as a best practice recommendation from us, we recommend priming. So we have four primers. We have clear, white, gray, and now our brand new dark gray, which is amazing. And I will link and tag the other video that goes through all things primer um, in this video for you guys. So you can look, find the link below and I'll have again, I'll, and it's going to walk through each of the different primers, a little bit more information about the primers. Right now, we're just going to paint it on. I'm going to show you how I paint it on, go through a little bit of that, and then that'll be it for our how to prep furniture to paint. So, first and foremost, I got my Kling on F50, and I'm just going to dip it down in there just a little bit, and we're just going to paint this on. And the gray is absolutely amazing. And what we're going to do is paint on a good thin layer. You're probably still going to see a little bit of whatever you have below peeking through. You don't want to glob this stuff on and big thick coats. You want to do a nice thin coat with as much of the complete coverage as you can and just laying it on. It's open time or the time that it stays wet or the time before it dries, the open time, is long enough where I can play with it. And you see me kind of going back and forth, back and forth. So you can kind of play with it to just kind of feather it in, level it out, do anything you want to do with it. But ultimately, you want to do two thin coats. So we're going to do one coat, wait four to six hours, depending on your climate and humidity level and drying time, and then do a second coat. And as you can see, I left the hardware and everything right on this piece, and that is absolutely something you can do because our primer is not only for stain blocking, but it's also for adhesion. So if you have hardware, you want to just paint right over the top, you just leave them right on there. Go through all your prep steps, just like we did, just like I did with them right on there, and then just prime right over the top of it. And that's going to be very helpful for your paint to adhere to those kind of metals or brass kind of surfaces. But this is all we're going to do. So I'm just going to paint this coat on. I'm going to come back probably in four hours here because I have a pretty controlled climate here in my shop and do a second coat. And that second coat will be where I do the, my very best to get complete coverage. So this first coat, we're just going to try to get it all on and feathered in, and you might still see the streaks of whatever color, especially because it's a very dark color I'm going over top of. Um, I'm seeing a lot of the brown streaks, but once I do the second coat, all that's going to go away. So I'm going to dab onto my knob I have over here, and I'm sure what you see across the front probably is missing. I'll get that here in a second. But this is all you're going to do. So you're going to get it on, and again, the, the open time is long. So you kind of get it on larger surfaces and then go in and just kind of feather it out. Feather it out so it lays flat and it's, you know, going to level itself out very well. Just like our paint. So this is all we're going to do. Lay it on here just like this. And then make sure if you have little uh, 
ridges where your hardware is, just kind of jack your brush down in there and then pull away from it to get any of the, the pooling. You don't want to leave any pooling of your primer because it's just going to make it more difficult later. And then we're just kind of gently feathering it in. All right, and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to come back and I'm actually going to show you guys the second coat. So you can kind of see what it looks like from one coat where you can still kind of see through it and the second coat where it's going to have complete coverage and have you ready for painting. All right, here we are four hours later and we're ready to do our second coat of dark gray primer. Our final step for prepping a piece for painting. Now it has been four hours, so I am going to stir my primer once again. Um, I highly recommend that anytime you're going to be away from your paints or primers for more than, you know, 30 minutes or so, you want to get back in there and just stir it up real good. Just always a good rule of thumb to make sure all the parts are mixed evenly throughout, especially with paint where you might have pigments or things separate and fall to the bottom. You want to make sure you stir it up real good. So we're going to do one more coat and then we're going to be done and then it's going to be ready for paint. So again, I got my Klingon F50 and you're going to watch this just completely cover this guy up where before it was like, you know, covered, but we did, when we did that thin coat, we still had some streaks of the brown wood that were peeking through from below. From below. And we're going to do the same exact thing, a nice thin coat, and then we're going to feather it in. Make it nice and level and flat. You're going to have lots of open times. You're going to be able to get it on a pretty good sized area before you really got to start feathering it and ensuring that it's uh, laid down perfectly. But this is all there's going to be to it. You're going to lay down two coats of this. Once this is on, you're going to be ready for paint. And we will have, or we already have, I should say, uh, color palette charts for all our paint lines that will tell you what we recommend is the best primer for whatever color paint you're deciding to use. Um, we have a lot of paints, so I can't rattle them off off the top of my head right now, but it will basically be our color palettes and within the color palettes written on each color, it'll tell you what color we recommend to use to kind of take the guesswork out of this part. So you've gone through all the trouble of the cleaning and the scuffing and the degreasing and the rinsing, and you get to the primer part and you're like, oh man, what primer do I need? Well, you can look at that kind of cheat sheet, if you want to call it that, and decide which primer you're going to need. So basic, just like the first time around, I like get it all on and now I'm just kind of feathering it out. And I know that front side where you guys can see is probably not complete, but I'll not worry about that right now. I'll get to that one. I get done with this part of the video. But this is all there is to it. So one of the things I wanted to mention is when you have these ridged areas inside, the recessed areas, you want to get into it and pull out, get into it and pull out. That way you don't have any pooling down in those uh, cracks and crevices and recessed areas like I talked about around the hardware earlier. Same kind of thing. Because you don't want to have any kind of pooling in there because it'll dry and then you'll have to figure out how to dig it out. So just better to get in there and do just like that. And all this is going to settle and flatten and look all pretty and be ready for paint. All right, that's looking good. And that's some amazing coverage, right? This is our dark gray primer. It's brand new. Again, we have clear, white, gray, and now dark gray. So all the different colors you could ever imagine for both stain blocking and adhesion. So whichever you're going to need a primer for, this one primer will have you covered, depending on what color you need. So that's it. And there you have it. How to prep a piece for painting. Step by step, our recommendations for a long lasting finish. And if you really enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe and like below. And if you're looking for any Wise Owl paint products, please be sure to find your local retailer near you. 
I'll tag it here in the video and I'll also put a link below that's going to be a, a video that I've created that actually walks through the steps to figure out where your local retailer is. I wanted to do that because a lot of times people just don't know either that they have one or how to find one. So it was a great way just for me to walk through on our wiseowlpaint.com website how you can figure that out. And if you really love Wiseowl Paint and you go to look and there's no retailer near you and you think maybe you want to be one, within that same video we'll have some information on that. So this is the first of many videos that we're gonna have on prep and painting and all kinds of fun stuff here on the Wise Owl Paint Party. We really hope you enjoyed it. And as always, happy painting.